All right, go. All right, you going? Yeah, I'm going. All right, hang on. Look at that! Look Woo! at this! That is a gorgeous broad-headed skink. Now, broad-headed skinks are a really neat species of lizard that I've wanted to see in person for a very long time. We don't even have the species back where I live in Central North Carolina. They only exist in the North Carolina coastal plain and then throughout most of South Carolina, Georgia. And their range is actually pretty expansive all the way out to the west. So this is definitely a skink of the southeastern United States. And it's very similar to the southeastern five-line skink, which is a species that we have back home. But the noticeable difference is the size. Look how huge this thing is. He's so thick. I have never in my life seen a native lizard that is this thick before. He's, he's so tubby. No offense, little guy. But he's so tubby. Now, this is an adult male broad-headed skink. And while I can get a little bit longer than this, technically, uh, his tail's kind of short. I'm not sure why. It might have regrown. He could get a little longer than this, but I would say this is a full-grown adult. Uh, you can tell he's a male because on his head, look at that red mating color that he's developing right along the jawline there. Now, he really would love to consume my finger. I don't think I'm going to let him consume my finger just yet. We'll let him have it right before I let him go, just so he's satisfied. Females of this species look almost exactly like Southeastern Five Line Skinks. The only way to tell the actual difference between the species is by counting the number of labial scales above the mouth. I'm not even going to do that. It's so hard. I probably would do it wrong but they're very similar species. The biggest difference is size. Now, they're also ecologically different. Broad-headed skinks are almost 100% arboreal species, especially a big male like this. You're almost only ever gonna see them up in the tops of trees. And that's because a lot of what they're eating is insects and smaller lizards. Now, they're very opportunistic like most other lizards. Um, they'll eat pretty much anything that they can catch, um, but when they're on the tops of these trees, not only can they get sunlight directly from the sun, and not have to worry about as many predators, any smaller skinks, like the Southeastern Five Lines or any anoles that are down lower on the tree, these will just run down the tree, snatch them, and run back up the tree. They're kind of like the jaguars of the skink world, so I think they're a really, really cool species. Now you can see, as far as body shape goes, this one's extraordinarily tubby. This is unusual, I'm going to tell you that. Usually they're a lot more streamlined than this, but you can see it doesn't have very impressive legs. I mean, compared to the rest of his body and even his head, his legs are teeny, um, but they're still very, very fast. All of this on his side and along his back, that's all muscle. So most of the movement that's happening when these guys run is kind of that lateral movement, just like a snake when it slithers. The feet are basically just here to provide grip. So you can see there on my finger, he has these teeny little hook-shaped claws on these very weak fingers, but that just helps him cling to the tree. It's these muscles that are doing the actual work when he's climbing or running on the ground. Now this is a species that almost exclusively hunts during the day. You see we have those very large eyes positioned on top. Ah! He got me once. It's okay, it didn't hurt. I just was surprised. He has those really big eyes on top of the head and they're forward facing. So that gives him binocular vision so we can see really well. So these are primarily visual hunters. They're using those really big eyes and that great vision to lock onto any movement that could be potential prey and then go seek it out. Now, one thing that is common among most lizards is you see on the sides of his head there, those are actually his ears, those little holes. So he has not, he doesn't have anything exterior there. Those are internal ears, but they're also very vibration sensitive. So inside these holes, he has a tympanum, a little eardrum, kind of like a frog actually. Um, and he's very vibration sensitive. So if he's sitting flat with his belly on a tree, he can feel vibrations of other lizards and stuff and receive those sounds through his ears. So these are very, very attentive lizards. They're very cautious. The only way you can really catch them is like this one, if they're on the other side of a tree from you and you can just reach around and grab like that. That's like the only way to catch them. Uh, but they're really, really cool. Now, because I've talked a lot about their ecology and stuff and he's wanted to bite me the whole time, I'll go ahead and let him do it. Might as well, right? These guys have probably the strongest bite force of any of the skinks of the Southeast because the back of their head and that neck there is just packed with muscle. All of that is muscle for biting down. So I guess I'll let him. You want it? So you see, when he chomps down on my finger there, all these muscles in the back of his neck are flexing and they're just pulling that lower jaw closed. Now, fortunately for me, this is not a species with exceptionally large teeth uh, because that would hurt. 
But I will tell you, as someone who's been bit by a lot of different lizards from a lot of different places, he probably does have the strongest bite of any of the lizards I've ever encountered. So take that for what it's worth. Now I would like to release my finger from his grasp. Please, let go, please. Okay, so this is a really cool species. I'm really glad I could bring this in front of the camera for you guys. Uh, it's just one of those lizards that are native and they're pretty small, so they don't get very much attention, but they're just such a unique species. Um, they're very ecologically important. So as I mentioned, he preys on all kinds of different animals. So he keeps those populations in check, but he's also an important prey source for lots of different predators. Any birds of prey or larger reptiles like snakes would love to get their hands on this little dude if they could, uh, but they're very fast and very hard to catch. So that's not very likely. Okay. All right, let's get this awesome little lizard right back in his habitat. Now I bet he'll climb right back up the tree. Oh, <laughs> I was expecting more speed. He's not coming around. He's just going, he's just sitting there. He's just sitting. Well, that's pretty. Good job, little buddy. Go dart, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a very impressively fast lizard, but it's okay, still cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the broad-headed skink. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.